This is my last video over the product rule, and in this video we're going to take the product rule and use it in a word application. Everybody's favorite, a word problem. So we have a manufacturer determines that T months after a new product is introduced to the market, X of T equals T squared plus 3T, 100 units, can be produced and then sold at a price of P of T, which is equal to negative 2 T to the 3 halves plus $30 per unit. So in this applied example, we have two parts. We want to first find the revenue of this product as a function of time. And in the second part, we want to figure out at what rate is our revenue changing with respect to time after four months. And is our revenue increasing or decreasing at this time? I've shown you examples of both of these parts before. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with the correct answer. Okay, so let's look at part A. First of all, we want to express the revenue for the product of this time. Now, revenue is the amount of money that we're bringing in, but we want to figure that out by taking the number of units, so however many units we're selling, times the price per unit. So in this example, our number of units is given by x of t, so that's x of t, times the price per unit was given by our p of t equation. So all we need to do is substitute in the respective equations. x of t is given as t squared plus 3t times p of t, which is given by negative 2 to the 3 halves plus 30. Now, I can choose to multiply this out and FOIL it out from here, but we are in the product rule section, so we're going to go ahead and leave this as a product so we get to use our product rule in Part B. So, my revenue equation is defined as this right here. So, moving on to Part B, we want to know at what rate is the revenue changing with respect to time after four months? And is the revenue increasing or decreasing at that time? Since our problem is asking for rate, of course we're going to be doing the derivative. And since, of course, we have a multiplication here or a product, we're going to be applying the product rule. So my derivative equation is the original of the second times the derivative of the first. The derivative of t squared gives me 2t. The derivative of 3t gives me 3. Plus the original of the first times the derivative of the second. So negative 2 times 3 halves. My 2s cancel out, giving me negative 3t. When I subtract a power, that gives me 1 half. The derivative of 30, it's a constant, gives me 0. So there we go. Now, what I need to do is I need to apply this when my time is equal to four months. Now, I can plug in four here, or I can simplify it a little bit and plug in four, or I can simplify it a lot and plug in four. Let me go ahead and simplify it just a little bit. I think we should at least take one more step to simplify it, and that's because I have fractions in my exponents. For most students, if I were to plug in 4 with these fractions and the exponents, they wouldn't know how to simplify it. So I definitely encourage you to rewrite my fraction exponents into roots. So this is negative 2. Now my denominator is 2, so that gives me the square root of t to the third power, plus 30, times 2t plus 3, plus t squared plus 3t, minus 3, my denominator is 2, so again I have a square root, and that is t to the first power, or just t. Now, I can choose to simplify this a lot more by foiling this out, but we don't necessarily want the most simplified derivative. Well, our whole goal here is to figure out what this is after four months. 
So we can go ahead and skip all that algebra simplification and just go ahead and plug in our form. So let's do that here. Now, if you choose to simplify it, that's perfectly fine. Don't be afraid to do that as well. So I have negative 2 times the square root of 4 to the third power. Now, let me talk about this a little bit. So the way it's written now is I would take 4 to the third power, so I would make it quite large, and then take the square root of it. But I can actually do that in reverse order. I can take the square root of 4 and then take it to the third power. So that means I'm going to make it smaller before I make it larger. And that should be easier to simplify it, especially if you don't want to have to utilize the calculator. Plus 30. Multiply that by 2 times 4 plus 3. Plus 4 squared plus 3 times 4 minus 3 times square root of 4. Now, I have something quite messy here, but it doesn't really matter whether I would have simplified it this way or whether I would have simplified it with t's. It would have all been a little bit messy. So let's go ahead and try and simplify this. I have negative 2. The square root of 4 gives me 2. If I take that to the third power, that gives me 8 plus 3. Here, 2 times 4 gives me 8 plus 3 plus 4 squared is 16. 3 times 4 gives me 12. And negative 3 times the square root of 4, root 4 gives me 2, so if I multiply that by negative 3, that gives me negative 6. Here I have negative 16 plus 30, which simplifies to 14. 8 plus 3 gives me 11. 16 plus 2 gives me 28. And then just copy down the negative 6. So 14 times 11 gives me 154 plus a negative 28 times 6 gives me 168. And 154 plus negative, or 154 minus 168, gives me a negative 14. So that tells me that my rate, or my r prime of 4, is equal to negative 14. Now this is a word problem, so we need to make sure that we label this appropriately. Since we're talking about a rate or a derivative here, remember my answer should be something per something. So in this problem, we're talking about revenue. Our revenue is, of course, defined in dollars and units. So I have dollars here, but then I also have 100 units. So my top label here is going to be in hundreds of dollars. And my per always is per whatever our variable was. Our variable was t, t stood for time, and our time is in months. So what's our rate after four months? Negative $1,400 per month. Now, let me rewrite that in a way that's easier to understand. I can take negative 14 and apply the 100 to it, so that's negative 1,400. Now let me label my dollars up here, negative $1,400 per month. So that makes a little bit more sense in this applied problem. Okay, my second question then, is revenue increasing or decreasing at this time? Since my answer is negative, that tells me that my revenue is decreasing at this time. So that means the revenue, or the money that we're taking in at this time, is descending. So this would probably be a great time to reevaluate our business plan to change our luck around. As always, I encourage you to double check this by using the graphing calculator. So let's go ahead and do so. So I have my revenue equation typed in here, just in the same format, in multiplication format. The only thing I switched was instead of t's, I'm using x's, because that's the only variable the calculator knows how to interpret. Let me go ahead and graph this using my standard window, which of course I'm going to have to adjust. I can clearly see that this is not a very good picture of this graph. Now, I probably know a correct way to adjust this graph manually. I'm assuming that that might be a little bit more difficult than most students can handle. So let me show you a new feature on the graphing calculator. If we go to Zoom, if I look at the very last option, option 0, I should see a Zoom fit. 
What ZoomFit does is it keeps your X values as defined, so in this situation from negative 10 to 10, but it tries to adjust the Y values that are mostly appropriate. Now, ZoomFit likes to over-exaggerate things in most times. Um, sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. Let's go ahead and see what it does here. So it helps us a little bit, but like I said before, it over-exaggerates things. We definitely don't need all of this dead space at the bottom part of my graph. But it does help us because it does tell us how high our graph is. It tells us this value here. So if we trace our graph over to that value there, the peak of our graph, or we could also use our maximum feature under Calculate, we can see that our graph goes up to somewhere around 392. So now we know how to manually adjust it so we get a good picture. So let me go to my window. Let me do my Y max. I can see 392.6. Let me go just a little bit above it. So let me go up to 400. Now we knew my Y min completely overdid it. It went way beyond what it needed to. So let's just go ahead and match our Y min to our Y max. So just do negative 400. Now we need to also select an appropriate Y scale. Let's just go by 50s or 100s. That's probably something reasonable. Now let me graph this again, and I should see a pretty decent visual of this graph, and that's what I see there. Now back to our problem in mind, we wanted to figure out what our rate was at four. So to double check rate in our calculator, we do second, calculate, option six, dy dx, and we substitute in when x is equal to 4. If we hit Enter, notice our dy dx value here is at negative 14. Now, think back to this being an applied problem. We're talking about revenue. If we look at this here, this is pretty much the peak of our graph. So that's pretty much the peak of our rate of our revenue. So at that point, we should definitely reevaluate our business plan to make sure that we get an increasing rate rather than decreasing. So we have solved our applied problem and confirmed that it's correct by using our graphing calculator.